Okay. Awesome. So hello and welcome to this edition of the Executive Intern Speaker Series at St. John Fisher College. My name is Jenna Ferrari and I'm currently serving as an intern with the Office of Enrollment Management. The Executive Intern Speaker Series aims to give students the opportunity to speak with successful professionals in the field that they are interested in working in. The Executive Internship at St. John Fisher offers students interested in gaining a broader understanding of executive leadership in higher education, the opportunity to experience it firsthand. As a part of the internship, students work with college leadership, collaborate with fellow interns, participate in networking opportunities, and more. For more information about the executive internship program at Fisher, please visit sgfc.edu. So now I would like to introduce Jill. Hi, Jill. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, you're very welcome. So just a little bit of an introduction. Uh, tell me about your current job title and what you do in your professional career right now. Sure. So I actually have a company called JK Executive Strategies, and my company provides recruiting services, search services, and human resource consulting um, to companies throughout the nation. So I have a team of 10. Um, I started the company in 2017, and we've grown exponentially. Um, so yes, I love my job. I love kind of where um, where it's evolved to and where my company has evolved to. So thank you for having me here today and I'm happy to be here. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's so awesome to hear the success you've had in just, you know, a few short years. So you are a double cardinal. You went to Fisher for your undergraduate and graduate education. So first off, why did you choose Fisher? So there were several reasons I chose Fisher. Number one, I was recruited to play basketball out of Pennsylvania. So that was um, first and foremost, I, I joined um, Fisher in 1990 um, as an undergrad, so a long time ago. And um, so basketball was first on my mind um, at the time, but then once I researched Fisher and got to know um, the school itself, my major was accounting and they had such a strong accounting program. And I also felt that Fisher was the size of school that I wanted to be. I, I was not ready to go to a really, really large school to be a number. So Fisher provided me with a lot of opportunities from a leadership perspective, but also a small enough um, campus so that I could get to know, um, you know, my fellow classmates and the rest of the school. Yeah, that's exactly how I feel. And right now the women's basketball team is pretty strong. So, you know, go Cardinals. <laughs> I know I've been following this year. So it's, I follow them every year, you know, it's just part of what I do. Yeah, it's awesome to see the program grow, you know, especially since you were here. So while you were at Fisher, what extracurricular activities were you involved in? And did you have any internships or things like that? Yeah, so I was actually pretty involved on campus. So um, actually, I got on campus um, and I the first thing I did was run for class president. So I was our class president in my freshman year um, and got pretty involved in, in student government at the time. I was also actively involved in Teddy, um, and I also played basketball. So I had a pretty full plate. Um, I did, I was the uh, vice chair of Teddy my junior year, and I chaired Teddy my senior year. Um, so I did not play basketball for the full four years, um, but really dove into um, the Teddy project, and that was almost a full-time job at the time. Very, very different than it is now. Um, and I get to come back and, and visit the Teddy Committee each year and things like that. So it's been, um, it's been quite a few years and things have definitely changed. But overall, um, yeah, I, I mean, there's, it was really hard not to get involved in things at, at Fisher, as you know. Um, so yeah, so I, I was involved in, in an awful lot, different than how it is today, but um, still just, just fun and really creating a, a community was something that I really loved. Yeah, it sounds like you were very certain, like very driven from the beginning and it goes to show, you know, through the rest of your professional career. So that's so awesome that Fisher helped to kind of prepare you for the leadership skills that, you know, you on later on, especially as you had your own company. So as um, many may not know, you are a trustee for Fisher. Um, so if you'd go ahead and kind of explain what your role is at and how you're still involved in Fisher. Yeah, so it was interesting because I got involved first in the alumni board of Fisher. So I served on the alumni board. Well, shortly after graduation, I actually taught a course at Fisher called career development. 
So um, when I was in public accounting, the accounting majors were required to take um, that course. And I think they still are, to be honest with you. Um, so I taught that course for a while because it was about a career in accounting and really um, your resume and interviewing and all of that type of stuff. And then um, I was the chair of the, um, the alumni board. And then a few years later, um, they asked me to join the board of trustees. So I've been on there for probably close to eight or nine years, maybe 10. Oh, wow. Um, and it's been, it's been wonderful to still be involved in, you know, kind of the strategic direction of where St. John Fisher is going. I was chair of, um, the audit committee, so was responsible for that for a while. I was, um, a member of the investments committee. I was a member of the development committee. Um, currently I serve on the executive committee of the board and I also chair, um, the CPA committee, which is the strategic enrollment planning and intercollegiate athletics. That's a mouthful, which is why there's an acronym. Um, and I also serve on the faculty affairs committee. So um, Fisher keeps me pretty busy when it comes to um, meetings and, and work like that, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. It's my way um, to give back to my alma mater that um, really set the stage for, you know, kind of where I am in my career. Wow, you know, we're so great to have you still involved at Fisher and it shows that once we graduate, there are so many different ways for us to give back and still stay involved, even though that we're not here for school. Oh, absolutely. And the thing is, it's still Fisher. So when they talk about, and I know that a lot of people talk about the Fisher family and things like that, but I mean, 30 years later, uh, my four best friends, we were freshman year roommates. So we all, and I'm going to put this on film, we all um, turn 50 this year. So we are going away for a long weekend, all of us to celebrate, but it's because of Fisher that I've had those wonderful people in my life for that long. So um, Fisher definitely is, um, is a, provided a strong foundation for me. Yeah, I'm a resident assistant and I'm always telling new incoming parents, there's so many people that I know who were random um freshman roommates and you know they're still best friends and still living together so it's so awesome to see you know you were in school a handful of years ago and it's still that same Fisher family and environment even now it is it is and it's so funny because all of our husbands like feel like they were part of our Fisher family too <laughs> you know? so That's yeah so so awesome. great. yeah yeah and then you also talked about so you graduated from Fisher with uh, a degree in accounting and so now you have your own recruitment Firm. So can you kind of talk about what led to your career path change uh, from recruitment um, to recruitment from accounting? Yeah, I sure can. So when I left Fisher, I went into public accounting, which a lot of folks do because they're, it's a great and honestly and a great place to start your career because you learn so much about companies and various companies and you learn a lot about the financials of companies and how to lead and run companies. Um, and then from there, I actually... Um, was recruited by a recruiting firm to actually do financial recruitment for them. So my foundation in accounting was actually um, lent itself to becoming a recruiter just in the financial field. So I did that for about 10 years. And then I went to another firm as a partner. Um, I was a minority partner in another firm. And then in 2017, I started this um, this firm. So I no longer just do accounting and finance recruiting, but that's where I started for the first 10 years of now, 25 years doing recruiting. Yeah, it's awesome to see, especially now with COVID, um, how easy and flexible it is to change different career paths and how, you know, one thing can lead to totally something unexpected. Absolutely. And that's where I, um, that's when I tell a lot of students and even my daughter who's graduating from high school right now, um, you know, what you set your path out to be isn't necessarily where you're going to end up because things happen and people change and people evolve and become interested in different things and passionate about different things. So I think keeping, um, having a well-rounded education and keeping um, kind of your options open as you grow uh, would be is so so important because you have to be really um, really open to different things and making sure that you you love what you do and that's so 
it's so hard to say, oh, I'm, I'm going to find a job that I love what I do, but you end up figuring it out. You know, you, you definitely do. And I, I absolutely love what I do. I mean, sometimes I talk about accounting because I recruit for CFOs and controllers and things like that. Um, but it's the people part of it that, and the intrinsic reward I get out of helping people with their careers that really kind of feeds, feeds my soul, if you will. Yeah, that goes perfectly along with my story. I've always wanted to be a classroom teacher. And so I'm an inclusive child education and psychology double major with a minor in financial planning. You know, I've come to college and I learned that there's so many other things to do and I have a different path. So as a non-business major, you know, what kind of extracurricular activities and skills can help to make me competitive for business related roles because I don't have that business um, major? Yeah, you know, a lot of times it's not always about your major and it's about who you are as a person and about the skills that you pick up along the way. So I can tell you, you know, specifically in my recruiting firm, in fact, we have four interns right now. One of them um, is from Fisher. She graduates in May and we just offered her a permanent position uh, once she starts. Um, and, you know, I think that when you, I hire for attitude, and I hire for fire in the valley because this job is fast and it's busy. Um, and to be honest with you, I'll train everything else. It's not like it's not like in this day and age that you're walking out of school with such narrow skill sets that you have to fit into a box. And I think that that's what a lot of employers are realizing is that there's an opportunity, um, regardless of your major. Um, for, for particular skill sets. So obviously strong communication skills are number one. Attitude is very, very, um, very important. Computer skills are excellent. You know, I can, I can tell you our interns can run circles around me with, with software like Canva and some of the, um, some of the softwares that, um, the graphic design softwares and even some of the, um, some of the other softwares that we use like PowerPoint and just graphics and things like that. So I think that really making sure that you're well-rounded from, from that perspective. And also, you know, the other thing is, um, you know, I think the, the ability to follow through, the ability to follow up and the ability to have honest and in-person conversations um, there's a lot of, um, there's a phenomena around just texting instead of having real honest and forward co conversations. And I think that you're going to see that really evolve in communication skills, both written and oral are very, very important. Yeah. So it really seems like, uh, nowadays to stand out against other candidates, it's more than that degree and having those other types of skills to offer. Yeah, it absolutely is. It's who you are as a person. And it's like you. I mean, Jenna, you, you've been involved in so many on-campus activities. You recognize that you have a double major, you have a minor, you've recognized that you might be interested in a diversity, uh, like a diverse set of different types of jobs. So you've prepared yourself well. And I think continuing to, um, to meet people, to put yourself out there and things like that in the business community are definitely things that, that will, will help and will help you evolve. Yeah, it definitely helps that we have awesome alumni like you and others who are you know, more than willing to talk to us Cardinals, you know, even give us internships. Um, and just like your intern from Fisher, you know, offer us jobs. So really this Fisher community, you know, extends outside and well beyond after we graduate. Absolutely. I, in fact, I think that there's a video of me at one point several years ago saying that um, I'll hire, I, I hire Fisher grads. I know what, I know what they've learned. I've known the foundation that they've, that they've um, grown up in. And I, you know, I have a comfort with that to know that I'm going to get um, what I expect, you know, coming out of, uh, off of campus. Yeah, it's great to know that we can really be prepared in our education. So the one last question I have for you to kind of wrap it up is, what is something that you're passionate about? So I am very passionate about our not-for-profit community in Rochester. Um, I serve also and will be the incoming chair of the, um, the board at Hillside Family of Agencies. And Hillside um, is a large organization that provides um, at-risk youth, foster services, adoption services, uh, residential care, and things like that throughout our community. 
So, um, and I have previous um, board experience for Bavona Child Advocacy Center. So I'm very pa passionate about um, kids and helping kids in our community, as well as being able to provide opportunities for Fisher students to be able to serve at our not-for-profit. So I did start a scholarship last year um, to be able to assist um, with paying interns for not-for-profits that can't afford to, so that we can get Fisher students involved in internships at other not-for-profits that might not be able to hire them. Uh, so that's where I'm passionate. I really believe that Fisher has a huge impact on our community and will continue to have our imp an impact on our not-for-profit profit community as well. And any way I can support that. So I guess the two things are Fisher and the not-for-profit community here in Rochester. Yeah, even with the different scholarships we have for first generation, the service scholars, we have so many different students out in the community serving. I know I just came back from a service trip and it's kind of reminded me, you know, I got to do some research and find a bunch of places I can commit to serving weekly and, you know, doing even more because it's so great to give back to the community. And again, I think it really helps you to be a more well-rounded person because you can learn so much more from serving others. I agree. And it makes you feel good. And I always say to people that if in your normal job, you can't fill your bucket in giving back to make sure to be able to identify, just as you said, organizations that could use your help. Um, you know, there's so many in Rochester, the Center for Community Engagement that sits at Fisher is a wonderful resource. So I just think that um, Fisher's done an unbelievable job at being able to grow that. And I think overall, um, it's, it's a it's a win-win. It's a win-win for our students to be able um, to serve our community, but also our, our organizations to be able to see what Fisher has to offer. Yeah, I mean, as I go through my time at Fisher, I just fall in love with Fisher more and more and realize how awesome we are. So thank you again, Jill, for your time and all of your great information. Fisher is so lucky to have you so involved. Uh, thank you so much, Jenna. It's been a real pleasure to get to know you. And thanks for, thanks for the talk today. It's highlight of my day. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much. You're welcome.